Sisters and brothers and comrades, the first thing I want to do is to thank all of you for being here today. And the literally thousands of people outside have come down here from all parts of our nations in order to deliver a clear message to this government, and that is that we're not going to stand idly by and watch our rights, rights that have been fought for over many, many decades by our forefathers and mothers, taken away from us. We are not prepared to stand by and watch the very name of democracy being dragged through the mud by this government who are drunk on the success and the foamy and lucky victory that they had on May the 7th. And to remind ourselves that 75% of the electorate in our nations didn't vote for this Conservative government. <laughs> and so everybody is trying to suggest that they have a mandate for doing what they're doing, well that's simply wrong. You've probably heard already a list of people who are opposed to this. This table said it was depressingly unnecessary. The police federation have come out against it as being dangerous. The CIPD, the professional body of human resource managers, have said it will take us backwards. The government's own regulatory body said it was unfit for purpose. And Amnesty International, Liberty, have said it's an attack on the democracy of our nation. And even leading Tories, uh, respected Tories like David Davis have said that this bill is more akin to a Franco dictatorship than a democracy. And I can tell you as somebody who deals with all of the major manufacturing companies in this country that not a single CEO of any of those national companies are in favour of this bill. So it's right that we are here, it's right that we are lobbying parliament in order to make certain that that voice of opposition is understood in the hope that the Prime Minister and his government will take a step back. But I want to spend a couple of minutes, and I do only have a couple of minutes, in raising the issue about what happens if we are not listened to? What happens if this bill goes through? And if we are subjected to the draconian attacks on our liberties? And I'll be honest with you, comrades, within the United we've had to take a decision that the only purpose of a trade union is not the fabric of the union, it's not the full-time officials, it's not our motor cars or our buildings, it's our members. And if we can't stand shoulder to shoulder with our members when they are in dispute, then what's the point of a trade union? And of course, <laughs> that's precisely what the students are hoping to do, to destroy the very essence of trade unions, to turn us into nothing more than an advisory body, but not a fan fighting or campaigning organisation. And we believe that will lead us to be pushed outside of the law. Something I'm not relishing, but what I'm not prepared to do is abandon our members and struggle. And that's why all of us have to go back to our unions and to our communities and to our local branches and into labour parties and into faith organisations to build a resistance. We're told that the law is sacrosanct. Well, thankfully, our history is littered, littered, as is the history of the world, with hundreds and thousands of brave men and women who were not prepared to see the law as sacrosanct and who stood up and defied that law in order to give us the freedom that we have. I don't doubt that I'll be attacked in the media for making a call for a define the law or breaking the law. And that's precisely why I recently wrote to the Prime Minister and asked the Prime Minister if he is genuine about his concern about low turnouts and industrial action ballots and he's repeated it over and over again that the main purpose of this bill is about low turnouts. Well, we've got an easy, easy answer for Give us secure, independent, workplace ballots and we'll never have to worry about turnouts ever again. Now that, 
That proposition was put to the Prime Minister to see whether he's genuine. If he doesn't take up that offer, then he will expose himself and this government to the real purpose behind this bill, which is to emasculate our movement, which is the biggest voluntary organisation within our nations, within our societies. With our families, we represent over 10 million people. And I reject the idea that this Prime Minister seeks to constantly put us forward as the enemy within. We are not trade unionists to the people who create the very wealth in our society, trade unionists to the people who create the fabric of the communities in which we live. Trade unionists teach our children, heal our sick, look after our vulnerable, care for our elderly, clean our streets, collect our refuse, create the communities of cohesiveness in which we live, and we reject the stigma of being the enemy within. And that's why, comrades, I say to you, in these last few minutes, believe in our values, stay solid together, because the time, I believe, unfortunately, is arriving where we will have to stand together, where we will have to defy the law in order to make certain that our heritage that was given to us by so many brave people remains intact. I believe in the power and the strength of ordinary working people. We now have a leader of the Labour Party who is supportive of our demands and a united Labour Party against this bill. Let's make sure that that solidarity and that unity carries us to justice and we stand strong together. Thanks very much, Congress.